Government drama llama ding dong talking about some general statistics. Before I get started, I just want to point out that this is a very, very, very broad overview and I'm not going to be using a lot of specific terms necessarily, partly because this is for people that aren't in the field of statistics or data science or anything like that. It can be very confusing, I don't believe in gatekeeping, and I think knowledge is power. In our example here, we see that we have variable x, variable y. Oftentimes in a lot of different studies, you will have multiple variables. Again, this is just for simplicity. You may also notice a lengthy title. And there's a reason for this, because when people do studies, usually they try to be very specific. So it'll end up being, you know, maybe a sentence too long sometimes. There are many, many types of graphs. I'm just using this one as an example. So when we have a data set that we're trying to analyze and it gets put into a graph, it may look like this with all the little blue dots. Each blue dot is a data point. You're trying to figure out if there is a line or a model that we can use to best describe this sort of data, which is this green line. So it may be referred to as model. That's basically the equation. You're looking for the line of best fit that will go through the majority of the data point. During the process of trying to determine the model that will best fit your data, you have to consider things like bias and variance. And that's why you'll have these things like the pink dotted lines here because obviously not every single data point is going to fit neatly onto a straight line. Some of you may have noticed that some of these points don't fall within this little area or fall anywhere near the line, and they are called outliers. In general, you're not supposed to remove the outlier pieces of data, and if you do so, you have to explain why, like it was a bad piece of data or something happened and it just came out weird. Pretty much every data set is going to have outliers. I can't really think of an instance where a data set did not have outliers. Part of the process in finding the line of best fit is determining if the outliers affect the model. In this example, there's only about seven points outside of this general area, but the majority fall within this space. So in all likelihood, probably little to no effect. This is why I kind of get annoyed when people bring in what about is and when it comes to statistics. For example, someone will say, well, most people drive cars in the US. And inevitably, someone will leave a comment that says something like, well, I fly an airplane. Well, good for you, Skippy. You're an outlier. The handful of people that fly airplanes does not negate the fact that most of the data points show that most people in the US drive cars. We could look further into the data and find that people that are outliers who fly airplanes mostly live in Alaska. Just because the majority of data points follow a certain pattern, doesn't mean that there aren't going to be instances that fall outside of that. This is completely my theory, but I think the reason this is a bit of a problem in the US is everyone wants to think that they're the outlier or they're the exception. That sense of individualism combined with wanting to be unique or special, I think is what makes people want to be that outlier. That's why it's important to look at the data source when you get an article because you want to see things like how big is the data set. Because in this example, this is a pretty decent sized data set where you can kind of figure out a line of best fit. But if your data set only has like 20 points, why is that? If a data source uses information from a survey, they should provide what those questions were and how it was evaluated. All this to say, if you're unsure about something, look at the data source. Until next time, I'm off to share more secrets.